This is Edith Brown, and I met you approximately two weeks ago. Correct. And I was impressed when I looked across the RV park, and you pulled up in a classy RV, and I noticed it was a toy hauler. And I saw you the next day pulling out a motorcycle, so or a trike. Mm -hmm. So I was impressed right off the bat. So I had to come talk to you. And over the two weeks, we kind of you know spent some time together. And I just wanted to tell you that you're an inspiration to me. And I just wanted to tell a little bit about your story. So what prompted you to buy an RV in the first place? Well, my life changed. Uh, my 43-year-old son died of a massive heart attack, and he and I rode motorcycle together. After he was gone, there was no reason for me to have a house any longer, because he and I did repairs together. So I decided to sell the house sell everything that was in it, give away what I didn't sell, and uh, keep a few items, and uh, choose a place to live, to start a different type of life. So I moved so to Sioux Falls. So was RVing a part of that decision, or were you just going to change locations? No, RVing has always been a part of the decision, but my son and I were going to do it together eventually. Uh -huh. So the biggest thing was, uh, since I knew that I was going to do it, and I had done a lot of research, I knew that I can't, you know, I can always tow a trailer, but I can't back one up. So that's why I decided to get a toy hauler, something that's contained, that I can still keep my motorcycle with me, yeah. and uh, be able to move from place to place. So I was looking for the um, unattached lifestyle and I think I found both of those not only that Sioux Falls is kind of wild open wide open country <laughs> <laughs> and I like that environment you know like the clouds and everything that are here and um, it's been fun I'm still having growing pains with my RV. So when did you purchase the RV and how long have you March, been? March, March 15, 2018. Were you an avid camper before or oh, was... Oh, yes. Yes? Yes. No? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've always been a camper. Uh, I camped when my kids were small. I was a Girl Scout. And um, I also mixed the groups together when we lived in Atlanta, so I had the boys and the girls camping together. Hmm. Um, my dog, Cloud, and I, we camp a lot at um, Ocean City, and there is a place called Frontier Town. Got everything. It's really nice. And uh, we would be there two and three weeks at a time. You mentioned your son. You also, you had two sons, correct? Mm -hmm. Both died. And both yeah. of them passed yeah, away. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, Patrick was the oldest. Uh, he was 17 years old. And he was going to a birthday celebration for one of the co-workers. And uh, he and his friend were going together, so Preston picked him up. And I found out later that they were only five minutes away from the house before this young lady that had her license for three days. It oh, had been right. raining for a whole week and it's dark and she comes into the development on the wrong side of the road. So she hits them head on oh, no. and she killed both of them. Oh, no. Yeah. So that was Patrick and uh, that was in 93. And then uh, Keithland died October 17, 2014. 2014. And then six months after him, Cloud, my white German Shepherd, died April the 10th, oh, no. 20, 2016. No, 2015 is when he died. Yeah. And you, you had said to me, which resonated with me, that you just crying and you just yeah. you had to. Yeah, I just, you know, it gets to the point in life, I don't think you ever get over no. anything as shocking as death. Right. And 
it's even more so when you've invested so much time and energy in raising children and expect to at least know that they can carry on and you've trained them well. And it doesn't work that way. Your kids die and they yeah, leave. I, you. I can't. I don't yeah. have kids, but yeah. I couldn't even. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, but I mean, you just think about the fact. You go like, if I knew they were gonna die, I wouldn't have spent so much time and work. You know, yeah. doing all of this. But you know, it is what it is. And um, I still do a lot of crying. Yeah. And I think I'll probably be crying until the day I die. Yeah. Uh, it's not often that you find a child that likes the same things you like. Oh, we so y'all were like, just oh, y'all you know, were like best friends. Yeah, yeah, you know, we were best friends and motorcycle traveling dogs is what and my son yeah. always got. You know, and I mean, we could talk for hours, and um, he liked the same old music that I like. Uh, he only started riding motorcycle because I was riding motorcycle. <laughs> you know, he couldn't stand the fact his mother was riding a motorcycle yeah, I was like, and what? he wasn't. Yeah, my mother's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, that's kind of what started all of this craziness. But back to the RV. Uh, when I moved to Sioux Falls, I was actually staying at a hotel called uh, My Place. A really nice hotel that had a complete kitchen and everything. And I was there crying, thinking, mm. I've got to do something with my life. So what am I going to do? I have been looking at the RVs. I have a general idea of what I want. So, okay, after 30 days, let's catch a plane, one-way flight to Texas. Oh, my gosh. And I bought the RV, signed all the documents, and... Uh, <laughs> I guess he took me out for a 45 minute uh, training and took me through town and I was a nervous wreck and yeah. shaking on the highway <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. And uh, finally he says, well, I think you got it, Edith. And I'm like, no, I can't do this. I said, why can't we just put it in tow, call it tow service, and we'll tow it back to Sioux Falls. <laughs> Instead of driving it? Yeah. <laughs> so he says, Edith. Yeah. You came in here on a one-way ticket. You flew in here. So what? You're going to tow the vehicle <laughs> and you're going to fly back. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so I said, well, yeah, that is right, isn't it? But anyway, I just put on my big girl pants. Yep. Because and nobody now was here you <laughs> are in New Mexico. Yep. So um, you, I mean, did you ever think of... Just moving to a different town or moving into a retirement center or, you know, was there any other lifestyle that appealed to you, you wanted to travel? Well, you know, I work for USDA. I was a property inspector. So, a part of my job, I had already seen what senior citizens do and how they live. <laughs> and you're like, I don't want to <laughs> you know? be there. Yeah, and I would be the only senior citizen riding a motorcycle. Yep. <laughs> you, you know? So, I don't want to do that yet. You know, yeah. I figure the day will probably come and I'll be looking for a little two-bedroom cottage somewhere uh, that I can have a dog and a lake and kind of be right. right now, it's just yeah. open road. Yeah. So you mentioned that you worked for USDA, mm -hmm. is that correct? Of agriculture. And then you retired. Mm -hmm. So you worked there in Washington, D.C. Correct. Correct. Which is headquarters. Then you were there during 9-11. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was at my, my office, sitting at my desk on 9-11 when you felt something shake. But I didn't know what it was. And a girlfriend from from Puyallup, Washington, called and was screaming on the phone, "Edith, run! Edith, run!" And I'm like, "What's wrong?" Yeah. You know? And she said, "Edith, run! Just run!" You know. And then I found out later that the plane hit the Pentagon, and um, it was a mess in DC. And so you you felt the plane hit yeah, the Pentagon. We felt the, it. it shook. So how far thing. were you from the Pentagon? 
Uh, if I was driving, it would take me about 45 minutes wow. to get to the Pentagon. And so you could feel it. You could feel it vibrate. It hit just that hard. And they just, it she just, just told you everything. to run and yeah. she. And she's in Washington. I'm like, yeah. if it's happening in D.C., why is she calling me from Washington knowing about this? And I don't. Yeah. You know? So how long have you been riding motorcycles? I started riding motorcycle January 2002. Yeah. That was my gift to me. So you bought, because now you have a trike, so you started with a motorcycle. Yeah, I had a Suzuki 1400 2 Wow. Yeah. And the funny thing about that is, <laughs> I wanted to ride motorcycle, so I signed up for the class at Prince George's Community College. And they sent a note telling you what you needed. You needed a full face helmet, you needed gloves, you needed to wear jeans, you needed to wear boots that would cover your ankle, and you needed to wear a lightweight jacket. Well, I went to get my helmet and my gloves, and I could not find a place to park. They had the balloons and everything all <laughs> out, and there were so many people, and they were walking up and down Central Avenue. And so I'm like, okay, all I need is a helmet and some gloves. So I park, you know, up the street, and I walk back with everybody else, get in there, and find out they're having a sail bash. So <laughs> I'm looking at motorcycles now. I don't even know how to ride a motorcycle. Yeah. But I'm looking at motorcycles like everybody else. So anyway, um, <laughs> I was sitting on a motorcycle. I didn't even know how to buy one because the one that I was sitting on was too small for me. So the salesman walk over and he says, hi, he says, come on, I've got one for you. That one that you're on is too small. You got long legs. I say, yep, I do have long legs. So we go to another section and the motorcycle is red and black. And it's kind of yeah. like a wineish yep. red color. It was just a beautiful bike. So I tell him, I says, well, what's the price? So he says, well, this is a one, a one a person motorcycle. The guy died of a heart attack. Uh, the wife decided that she would sell it. It only had a uh, thousand seven hundred miles on it. So. I said, okay, good. So what's the price? So he said, twelve thousand we'll sell it for twelve thousand. And I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> I said, if you sell it for for ten or seven, he said, Well, let's make it ten. I said, No. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, Well, what are you willing to pay? I said, Let's make it seven. It's gonna be a birthday and a retirement gift for me. I said, I won't retire until 2004, but I know this is what I want to do. So, anyway, he says, okay, let me go talk to my boss. So he goes talk to his boss. He comes back. And so he says, okay, it's a deal. So I said, well, how do you want your money? And so he said, um, well, you can do a credit, chart, credit card or something. I said, nah, take me to the bank. <laughs> I'll get the money out. I said, because I want to be done with you yeah, guys. I'm so done. I paid cash. <laughs> oh, right? wow. It's like, and, I bought a motorcycle. I bought a motorcycle, finally got around to getting the helmet and the gloves. So you and bought one without ever riding, and yeah. you bought a classy motorhome without ever... <laughs> you right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Seem to be a habit, yeah, right? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> this interview has been so much fun with my new RV sister, Edith Brown. In part two, we're going to learn exactly what happened in that motorcycle class, and we will hear about the special talent that she has found success with. So y'all stay tuned.